I'm Celine, I'm curator at the Singapore Art Museum and I'm also the curator for the Singapore Deviation Wonder with Art through the Real Corridor Public Art Trail. Singapore Deviation is a series of three new public art installations that are sited along the Real Corridor South. The Real Corridor Trail introduces um, the shifting publics and users of the Real Corridor through new perspectives on the social, historical and ecological histories or users of the space that continue to determine the relevance of the Real Corridor. We wanted to also think about how we could invite visitors to this public art trail to physically deviate um, into adjacent sites to the Real Corridor as a way of exploring tangential histories um, to the Real Corridor. I'm Tan Bin Bin. I have made mainly documentaries about Singapore. I want to say I'm a magpie, but <laughs> maybe. I, I call myself a magpie because I'm always uh, going around my surroundings, seeing things people don't see and then trying to salvage uh, for ourselves or if not for ourselves, then for other people. And then we try to make something out of these little pieces we have salvaged. My name is Hilmi Johandi. My work mainly deals with sources uh, that is historical uh, as a form of reference. This sort of nostalgic occurrence when looking at these images is quite interesting to revisit in a creative process. When I was starting out painting, um, I had this interest of integrating cinema in relation to the process of painting. So I developed this idea of applying multiple combination of scenes into one single frame, which eventually has been developmental in my practice. My name is Sukun. I'm an artist. I make sculptures and installation. I'm interested in the unstable nature of existence and in my work I present different perspectives of reality as well as create alternative universe. I'm interested in this because a lot of time we are more focused on the real world, the tangible world, where else a big part of us live in the intangible world, our imaginative world, our emotional world. But this part of us is not given enough attention. Walk Walk is a commission by the Singapore Art Museum. I have conceived of the bus terminal as a canvas to place three interventions and they all relate to how walking can create space. It's interesting to think of a bus terminal as the space because so often with these invisible spaces, they are extremely transitory. And for me, it was really a dream come true to be able to cite the work there. On several fronts, first of all, I just really liked that space. <laughs> so I had no reason but the fact that it was just a very, very relaxing space. We converted the Transit Link office into a cinema, um, showing a 27-minute video. We showcased four sets of profiles talking about everyday walking and what walking means to them. If walking is a ritual for some of these people, then I wanted to make the parallel theme that actually going to a cinema is also a ritual. And this is a ritual I really want to protect. And what better way to protect that ritual but to let people know that this film is never going to go away after one week. You have up to two years to see the film. Pitchcraft Landscape Grounds is a public artwork inspired by early advertising materials um, from the FMSR. I was particularly looking at this idea of assembling different fragments of scenes into one single flat surface of the canvas that is uh, derived from a process using lithography and eventually I had experimented with different forms of media which were then scanned and then uh, blown up into billboard size uh, structures. I find it quite interesting to see how uh, at the time of present working with this material in relation to looking into the past. My sculpture is titled Moonlight. As a form, it is a sublimation of a burnt log. It has an exaggerated texture of tree bark and it's hovering on a thin twig legs which is in contrast with the heaviness of the top. 
The idea of Moonlight came from a work that I did in an artist residency in Aomori Contemporary Art Centre. That original Moonlight was a hollow piece of wood that was lying flat on the ground. If I'm lifting a Moonlight and placing it vertical, it changes the meaning of the work. It becomes almost like a personification of a being, an entity. The design of Moonlight encapsulates what the real corridor represents, which is historically a um, transportation route between two countries. And right now, it is a space that transports the viewer from a constructed world to a unkept natural one. One of the things that we wanted to explore together with her was the lush, uncultivated landscape of the rail corridor. Because of the fact that, you know, for the last three decades of its running, the entire rail corridor was left largely untouched. There are all these pockets of spaces that are adjacent to the rail corridor that people don't notice or often overlook. And I think that what Sukun's work does is that it brings attention to the landscape. Celine and I found that uh, deviating from the real corridor to go to see the artwork that is a slight canopy of foliages and a forestation to go through, that creates that feeling of entering a magical scenario, an alternative world. As people walk through the atrium, I wanted to find a way to animate every step they make in a very rhythmic fashion, something new reveals, and also bring to attention um, a space that is traversed by th hundreds and thousands of people who would never notice these very functional architectural details. When we got an uh, inkling that SBS was interested in Walk Walk, then we decided to see whether they, were, they would be interested in the third part of it. So you could say it's a secret art piece, because most people don't know about the canteen. I use the phrase man man zo. It's a phrase my grandmother used to me every time I, I went out of the house as a kid. She would say ban ban kia. Um, that was her way of saying take care and be safe. When we use it in a double way like this, it suggests a certain casualness. The whole idea is that a very simple gesture like walking can have extremely profound implications. Conventionally speaking, you know, you see these kinds of structures as, as somewhat distant. But I think that what you had done in your design of it is like wandering into a stage. For them to even kind of question whether or not, like, am I part of this setting? Like, what is the apprehension point of it and the entry point? After being at the location for a while, mm -hmm. I noticed there were trails along the grass patch. Yeah. So I too acknowledge that passerby could also experience the work in a different way. Manner. I remember when we first installed the work here, there were some people who walked past without noticing it entirely. Mm -hmm. I realised that the work could choose to present itself to an audience or not, which I thought that, that was really fascinating because it was just kind of like working itself, you know, yes. towards its environment. That's a really interesting point. I think like this is the reason why we want to do public artwork. It's to take the art uh, outside of the white cube of a gallery space or a museum space and have it in the real world and interact with different people. Uh, it makes the art real. It makes the work real. It makes the work alive. Mm. And that's, uh, that's the awesome thing about like, you know, having the work out here. We spoke about the idea of bringing a gesture into an unexpected space, also, right? Like, like that of the museum. Then, of course, it, it highlights the idea of mobility within like a transport system infrastructure network, right? The whole idea is like to, to think about um, bringing people here to a place that they wouldn't otherwise go, mm. and from moving forward, seeing public transportation nodes in a totally different light. It's so defamiliarizing. Mm. and yet so familiar at the same time. I find it quite interesting to perhaps revisit certain historical qualities in the location in that may be conjured through the work. And then as one wandered from one point to the other, the experience start to change from something that could potentially be flat from a distance to something that could be encountered more up close and personal. It's important for me as an artist that I don't have the final say of what the work means and it's the people that sees it that their own perception of that that completes the work. And this is what I want to bring into my work. 
just by taking like you know everyday object things that are familiar tweaking it a bit and we are able to experience our world in a different way what art in public space does, especially in the form of Singapore Deviations, the Public Art Trail, is that it offers an alterity to the reading of the urban environment around us. Oftentimes when we walk or when we move along spaces or move through spaces, we tend to do it slightly mindlessly. I think what we want to do is to really slow people down or to invite them to have fresh eyes towards these environments as well.